Hi, um, I am here in Moscow. We are at the offices of webinar.ru and I'm meeting with Alex and Alex. So, um, Alex Shamis, hi, nice hi. Meeting, you. meeting you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and things you do? Sure. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I have uh, found several companies here in Moscow, uh, including uh, webinar.ru and foodie.ru, which are analogs of WebEx and uh, Siemens Web in the US, and uh, also a company uh, called Printio.ru, which is similar to Zazzle in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, previously, I, uh, I was born in St. Petersburg. I moved to the US when I was 14. I uh, spent eight years there. I got an engineering degree uh, in New York and uh, worked for a few years at uh, several investment banks. At which point I decided to, that Russia has many opportunities and I quit my job there and moved. And two and a half years ago I moved to Moscow. Excellent, thank you. Um, Alex number two, or Alex Alperin. Nice meeting you. Can yeah, you tell nice a little bit about yourself and what do you do? Yeah, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm CEO and founder of Webinar. That are you? Also, I take part with Alex at Foodic. That are you? Um, previously, I worked at Sapexis, That's an investment firm uh, which we started, uh, I think, in 2007 uh, to help startups in raising money from venture investors and uh, later we became investor ourselves and invested and done a few deals here in, in Russia and a couple in the United States to our um, private investors, uh, private U.S. investors. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You guys mentioned that you formed some kind of new community or society here in Russia with the name Food to Russia. So can you tell a little bit more about this organization, what you guys do, and why you decided to organize it. Yes, that, that's right. Uh, Future Russia is uh, actually a community of entrepreneurs, uh, developers, scientists, uh, investors, um, targeted to um, help Skolkovo, to promote Skolkovo, and work together with the Skolkovo project uh, to model some processes before actually Skolkovo starts and uh, to help uh, like uh, with um, um, raise community around this project. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so can you tell how you guys gather those people, how you spread the word and find entrepreneurs and VCs and everyone else mm -hmm. to sure. join you? So, Futu Russia consists of uh, many people spread across different regions of Russia uh -huh. and uh, other countries. Okay. Uh, we, uh, we have a central coordination committee that we all participate in, me and Sasha and a few other people, and we basically manage the process and the directions that the community takes. We uh, generate interest from the members to take part in different, uh, in different projects. Mm -hmm. Some people uh, take charge in uh, uh, real communication with universities, other fine scientists and build a database of uh, a knowledge base, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, others uh, communicate with the Skolkovo people, the Skolkovo administration, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, put, connect together VCs and projects and Skolkovo and everybody else. Uh, that's basically it. Yes. So how many people do you have so far? It's 600 registered people and uh, many, many more, say a few thousand. And what's, what's the distribution? Entrepreneurs versus VCs versus some other people? Well, obviously, uh, we see comprise a small part. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I say it's uh, about 50-50 split between entrepreneurs and uh, scientists, uh -huh. people from research. And what the format? Are you guys meet like do you meet like on a regular basis or? Yeah, we meet regularly. Um, there is you know, a general meeting uh, once a week, and uh, the, the groups working on specific projects they meet more often. Uh, them. Uh, the most of people, uh, this this not their full time activity, but that's like their social activity. They do something on their job, or they entrepreneurs, and um, they uh, commit you know a few hours a week to to do something for future Russia. Except uh, a few guys, one of them, Ivan Burtnik, actually, they, the head of uh, Future Russia, who committed full time to, to this activity. Uh huh. 
can you give me examples of projects that you have done or you just started? Any examples? So our goal is to is to spread the word, to okay. create the ecosystem around this, around Skolka. Mm -hmm. So uh, from what has been already accomplished for most part is uh, we, we really tried hard to, to participate uh, in all major events, conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, so we uh, we participated at the Seliger camp, which is uh, probably one of the biggest uh, events where all the innovators uh, come to uh, the suburban area. Basically, it's a real camp mm -hmm. in, the, in the forest, in the woods. And uh, it's about 10, 20,000 people gather there. And uh, the people from uh, administration, including Medvedev, was there. So we organized our own section mm -hmm. in this camp. We picked, uh, hand-picked, a uh, couple dozens of best projects, which uh, presents, presented their work to, to the president and to other people. So. Mm -hmm. So if you look at what you do and the state of startups or entrepreneurs in Russia, what do you think are the major difficulties that you guys are facing in terms of developing this Silicon Valley thinking or pushing forward innovations and enabling that? I think we, we don't have enough success stories. And that... Uh, because of that, not too many people actually thinking about starting their own business, uh, as uh, opposed to say USA, where probably almost 50% say they want to start their own business sooner or later. And also because of that, uh, we don't have that much interest from uh, from the foreign investors and foreign companies uh, to expand into Russia. So we need more success stories, and for that we need more more startups. So. Well, and uh, we need, uh, I think, more entrepreneurial-minded people to do that. So that's uh, actually one of the uh, biggest purposes for us to uh, tell people about entrepreneurship, to, to share them success stories both here in Russia and outside, mm -hmm. and uh, make them to start something. Mm -hmm. Do you think there are any specific conditions in Russia that prevent people from becoming entrepreneurs? Compared to like you spend time in the states, so you know how the things have done, you know, have been done in the states. Do you think there are any specific condition, conditions in Russia? Uh, there are well, there are a lot of bureaucracy, and everybody knows about it, which makes it uh, significantly more difficult just to get started with about anything. There are problems with uh, just setting up a company, running a company, organizing, uh, doing accounting, mm -hmm. uh, online payments, billing, and so on. There are high barriers, entry barriers in certain markets. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, there isn't uh, uh, enough angels. There aren't enough angels, and it, it isn't. It isn't really very easy to get the first capital to get started and to get uh, good mentors. Mm -hmm. That's most common problem. But at I the guess. same time, do you see any advantages? Yeah, sure. And why you think well, actually, I, I, would, I would not completely agree with the uh, bureaucracy. That's, uh, of course, that's the point. But anyway, that's um, to start a company, you need a few days here. That now that's not a big issue. Uh, accounting also, it, yes, it takes some time and money. But anyway, if you want to do something, you will do that. I think, uh, I, I think the, the uh, biggest challenge is mental to 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 make people think about entrepreneurship and do something. Um, and maybe other reasons comparing uh, with um, uh, countries like, like Israel, uh, they have uh, really uh, big government support, uh, support first of all for uh, early stage investors. Uh, they share risks with them. Uh, uh, sometimes that's even uh, four time leverage uh, to the money that uh, private investor invests on early stage to, to early stage companies. Mm -hmm. So um, if we would have something similar here, here probably uh, there would be much more angel investors that mm -hmm. uh, invest and risk. But since they have four times leverage, let's say, or at least two times, uh, there would be much more of them, I think. So if, um, thank you. So if you would want to kind of in conclusion Tell us a little bit more about what type of support Silicon Valley or U.S. entrepreneurs, VCs, can provide you with 
what kind of co cooperation you're looking for so we can kind of engage with you and help you with this task of uh, creating entrepreneurial community in Russia. What else if you can expand well, on that? Well, I think uh, the, the, the most thing that Russia and also Skolko needs is uh, Western expertise. So um, that's, I think, the, the, the biggest help that the, uh, the, the foreign community could provide is um, coming here or uh, interacting with the Russian entrepreneurs or officials and to, to provide their expertise to uh, become mentors in some projects or companies. Um, and also uh, maybe uh, investors, uh, they should, they, as they provide their expertise with their money, uh, if they would come, this would be, uh, sure this would be awesome, but um, I think on our side we have to do something to attract them. Mm -hmm. I think if you had to summarize it, I'd say that uh, uh, what we really need is, uh, is uh, foreign uh, investors to view Russia as a very lucrative business opportunity. Mm -hmm. Like they view Asia, or India, mm -hmm. uh, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. they, have, they have to be thinking of Russia as a chance to make money. So mm -hmm. Then they'll participate and they'll come here for, for events. They want a uh, deal flow. So they'll become mentors. Start the angel investing and so on. Mm -hmm. All that will, will give a boost to and create, create competition for our local investors as well. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time, and we'll definitely take some actions and see how we can move certain things forward. Yeah, thanks for thank you. Me.